It's me here, kiddos, Tony Bowman, and I am here with the famous Dr. Jill. Hello. Welcome back to our latest edition of the Nutrition News. In this edition, we will be discussing screen time. Please invite your whole family to listen in as we have important information for the whole group. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed the dynamic of school, how we socialize with friends, and how we visit family. To stay safe and socially distanced, over the past year, we have had to lean on technology more than ever before. While we are thankful to have technology to lean on, we do need to be careful how much time we are spending in front of the screens. The use of digital devices and their relationship-based apps have become and continue to be priceless lifelines to family members affected by the pandemic. An alarming number of children have suffered greatly when it comes to eye trauma, deterioration of sleep quality, obesity, and loss of creativity. Spending too much time in front of the screen can hurt our eyes, increase how much we eat, impact getting a good night's sleep, and make us a little less creative. Let's look a little more closely at the latest research on the impacts of too much screen time. Dr. Albert Cowery, ophthalmologist and director of glaucoma services at Rutgers Medical School says, the muscle in the eye, the ciliary muscle, works extra hard to focus on images the closer they are to the face. Everything is at arm's length, whether it's the TV, iPad, or computer screen. And there's evidence to suggest this close-up world we live in leads to progressive myopia or nearsightedness. Let us look at the research associated between healthy eating behaviors and screen time. A study published in BMC Health found heavy users of screens, those who use screens an average of 17.5 hours a day, reported the least healthful dietary patterns and the poorest health-related characteristics compared with moderate and light users of screens, those who averaged 11.3 through 7 hours of screen time per day. Assistant Professor and Laboratory Director at the Rutgers Sleep Lab, Andrea Spaeth, PhD, says, Screens emit blue light, which disrupts the body's production of melatonin, the hormone that regulates our body's sleep-wake cycle. Exposure to blue light from screens after dark may affect a child's ability to fall asleep and stay asleep. Remember this term, melatonin? We discussed this in our Mood and Food edition of the Nutrition News. When we get a good night's sleep, this is also good for our mental health. Pediatrician and director of the Center on Media and Child Health at Boston Children's Hospital, Dr. Michael Rich, says, The growing human brain is constantly building neural connections while pruning away less used ones, and digital media use plays an active role in that process. Much of what happens on screen provides impoverished stimulation of the developing brain compared to reality, he says. Children need a diverse menu of online and offline experiences, including the chance to let their minds wander. Boredom is the space in which creativity and imagination happen. Yikes, kiddos! That was a lot of information. It is important to point out it is okay to use our screens, but we need to be aware of how often we are using them and find balance. So, what can we do to manage how often we are using our screens? especially while we are managing through the COVID-19 pandemic. First and foremost, we need to establish time limits. Parents in the room, listen up. This tip is for you. Your children can earn 30 minutes of screen time if all their homework is done, all household chores have been completed, and they've been physically active for at least one hour. All social media use and texting with friends must end at least one to two hours before bedtime to not interfere with their quality of sleep. Let's talk nutrition. Mealtime is a key time we do not need to be in front of the screens. Not only is this a good time to take a break from the screen, but eating in front of the screen can cause bad habits. When we eat while doing homework or watching TV, research shows We eat more and snack more after the meal because we do not enjoy the meal as much and do not pay attention to our level of fullness. Parents and caregivers, we need you to set a good example too. 
Do not expect your children to put their devices away during dinner. If you are on your device, keep all devices away from the dinner table. Enjoy each other's company and conversation during meals instead of staring down at your screens in silence. Be present and be an active listener. Your children may surprise you. Let us look at a few positive eating habits. First, try enjoying at least one meal a day with your family. Of course, during COVID-19, this should be the family that you are living with. Eat slowly while having a conversation with your family. Use this time to catch up. Eat until you are satisfied. Learn to listen to your body and know when you are full. Another key tip is to take a break. When you have a lot of schoolwork to complete online and need to be in front of a screen for extended periods of time, get up, stretch, and move around. Parents and caregivers, go for a walk around the block with your children. You will both benefit from all the positive physiological reactions you will get from the intentional movement, fresh air, and rush of endorphins. It's important we manage our screen time. If you know there are portions of the day that you are going to be at a screen, such as school or virtual time with friends and family, make sure the other portions of the day are filled with activities that do not involve the screen. You can play a board game with your family, read a good book, play outside, learn an instrument, cook with mom or dad, or be creative and draw a picture. The lesson today is not to avoid screen time at all costs, but to be mindful of how often you are looking at the screen. When you know you are going to be at the screen during the day for school, make sure to take breaks and walk around. Lastly, make sure the other portions of your day are filled with activities that do not involve the screen. Thank you, kiddos, for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed our latest edition of the Nutrition News, and we look forward to talking with you again soon.